Ku grazzi Sandro, uwek għandil il-Pol Fenek, il-Captain ta' Balzan. Pol, min kejja li kreja jtu inqastu li t-tġbru daw it-tlet punti l-lum? Lawe l-kommenti tija? Ku jifimni, naħseb, merita ta' ment il-Mosta kien forsi jenna jdu li kien ħaqqum il-tlet punti. Naħseb imma l-iktar li kreja jenna, naħseb kienu konna aħna. Pero, patejna għarja sal għad txansis li t-lifna aħna. مسكور يا وجيش جوز ليوم أزبالي تانا وقال جيفيدا لزبالي للجوز ليام لكونه وجيش بالي تانا من نهار الأخر عملنا لزبالي إحنا قدام اللاستا في 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 الفورد لين اللي تلفنا على شانس سو خرجنا من أربونتي. بول بونت مطلوفة في البدو تالستاجون سريع من أكتر دفيشلي الكومبلمنت تالستاجون أدنا في البدو فيرا، pero أنك من هبالي تناش التيم دينس اللي يستاي كون نبكو مكتر قدين پرو ايانا يدونا ما نساوش نبقى بدك لسكوزا اللي يادو بدو داو البونتي وما كنا نجوب دسا بونتي كنا نبقى ما تفوق جفيري استا يسنا في التلف انا اوه هلنا في نفس الكلاسيفيكا پرو الامبورتان تيسا هوفيا ما تنهار سول قدين من جفيري ما نبروفا نهدو من اللسبال اللي عملنا اللوم بش كم يستاي كون نجبو بونتي Grazie. Grazie Paul Fenech, mi nagu nuftit al momenti johra, nidu l-kommenti tal-captain din id-darba ta' Mosta, il-captain ta' Mosta, Tajrin Farruġa. Ma la Tajrin Farruġa ma ġona kamilleri? Lawa l-tlet punti tal-istagġun istaw najdu, il-kommenti tijak? Xie, mifimni, l-vela lawa l-tlet punti għara ħames lobbit, pero kif kol ħatra l-lobbit ta' għabe, speċalment malħabnu malħal berins, konna dejjem super juri fuq omit nejn, ovvjament timsaħtu iktaru, Il-punti ma wasluġ da kienar, pero waslu l-lum kifin u xiera fuq kolloċ. Tajrin, l-arbaħtu għanza qsijil, jak episodju li ġra tanka fil-partita ta' karta safra, nixiek t-diskrif iġġara għazata li xinti għatti li ma kienx u jidari li forsi ollejtida kur referira karta safra. Ezzat, mi fimni, palmo ollejtidi, jen olle għaj dom ħames ti players minta, għano ħamsa minta ħom, pero fimni, t-darba referit deġida li minni ġie li għat, ħa karta safra wiħet minna u flok li jħorħat ta' jena u. Pero l-lum t-intesa għax fil-baħtu. Oli, muċek. Grazzi, Tajrin. Jubal Ilkom in Hotels.com U Mastercard Sponsor Sal UEFA Champions League Schultz and Laschet are neck and neck in the race to succeed Angela Merkel as the next Chancellor of Germany. Strong performances from Germany's Greens and Liberals leave them well placed ahead of coalition talks. The elections to the new Bundestag have left Social Democrat leader Olaf Schultz 
and his conservative CSU rival Armin Laschet in a neck-and-neck -neck contest to become the next Chancellor of Germany. Laschet was Angela Merkel's chosen successor, and as the results started to come in, his first thought was to pay tribute to the woman he hopes to replace. For the first time in 16 years, Angela Merkel did not run for Chancellor, he said. Those were 16 good years for Germany. And that's why my first thanks go to the Chancellor for her good work. Laschet will need the backing of two parties if he's to get the chancellorship. It'll be a challenge, but he told his supporters he'd do his utmost to succeed. A vote for the union is a vote against a left-led government, he said. That's why we'll do everything we can to form a federal government under the leadership of the union. Because Germany now needs a coalition for the future that modernizes Germany now. Out in front in the early counting is Social Democrat leader Scholz, but his margin is wafer thin, and he too faces a difficult task ahead if he's to form the tripartite coalition he needs. It will be a long election night, he said, that's certain. But it's also certain that many citizens have voted for the SPD because they want a change in government and because they want the next chancellor of the country to be Olaf Scholz. The result, if confirmed, will be a personal victory for Scholz, who can claim to have turned his party's electoral fortunes around. But it's short of the clear mandate to govern that he will have been hoping for. With counting still continuing, the Social Democrats are forecast to come top of the poll with 26%, up 5.5% on four years ago. The CDU-CSU union are on 24.5%, their lowest ever score. The Greens are on track for their best ever score at 13.9%, while the Liberal FDP are steady at around 11.7%. The far-right AFD and the far-left De Linke party have both slipped back from their 2017 performances. The German Green Party is set to have a pivotal role in the upcoming coalition talks, with forecasts predicting they'll be the third party in the Bundestag with nearly 15% of the vote. But the joy of lead candidate Annalena Baerbock was tinged with disappointment that things could have been better. Tonight we cannot just celebrate, she said. For the first time in this federal republic, we have stepped up to shape this country as a leading force. We wanted more, but we didn't achieve it. This was also due to my own mistakes at the beginning of the election campaign. But we stand here tonight and say, this time it wasn't enough, but we have a mandate for the future. Along with the Liberal FDP party, the Greens know the shape of the next government is in their hands. The Greens celebrated their results, says Euronews correspondent Kate Brady. It's the best ever at a federal election. But it's far from the opinion poll forecast in spring when the Greens were top of all parties. The Green leaders Annalena Baerbock and Robert Habeck said that the Greens have a mandate for the future. The Green candidate for Chancellor, Annalena Baerbock, conceded that mistakes were made during the campaign by her and by the party. Obviously, the Greens didn't hit home with the climate topic, but nevertheless, it's clear the Greens probably will be part of the next government. They would prefer a traffic light coalition with the Social Democrats and the Liberal FDP. But they don't exclude a Jamaica coalition with the Christian Democrats and the Liberals. There are long weeks and maybe even months ahead for them, 
But tonight the Greens are dancing and celebrating. Kate Brady, Euro News, Benin. Switzerland has voted to allow same-sex couples to marry following a referendum on Sunday. The measure was passed by 64.1% of voters in favour and won a majority in all of Switzerland's 26 states. Switzerland's parliament and the governing federal council supported the marriage for all measure. It is an incredible victory. We were really carried by Swiss society today. A very clear sign for human rights, for dignity, for LGBTI communities. I think for many people, after years of struggle, after years of discrimination, this step is just overwhelming. Switzerland has allowed same-sex civil partnerships since 2007, but this vote would put same-sex partners on an equal legal footing with straight couples. It would also allow lesbian couples to make use of regulated sperm donation. Iceland has elected a female majority parliament. After all votes were tallied on Sunday, female candidates held 33 seats in the 63-seat parliament, with centrist parties making the biggest gains. Earlier, the country's prime minister said it's now a case of forming a government. First, think of our results, and then we will evaluate what will happen. And, you know, there are many things that need to be thought of when forming a new government, obviously. And we will also have to see uh, how the governmental parties are doing together and how we are doing. And obviously, according to these preliminary results, uh, we, are, uh, we are losing a little bit and the, progress the progressives are uh, gaining. Among incoming members of parliament are the oldest and youngest lawmakers ever to take a seat in Iceland. 72-year-old burger shop owner Thomas Thomason and 21-year-old law student Lenya Rune Karim, a daughter of Kurdish immigrants who's from the anti-establishment pirate party. Tensions between Serbia and Kosovo continue to intensify in a row over vehicle license plates. Serbia doesn't recognize its former province's nation status and forces drivers from Kosovo to buy temporary plates when entering the country. Now Kosovo's decided to do the same. In response, ethnic Kosovo Serbs blocked the provisional border with trucks and two government officers in the capital Pristina have been attacked. <laughs> The incineration of the vehicle registration centre in Zubin Potok last night after midnight was no accidental fire, but a deliberate one. And in the vehicle registration centre in Vikan, two hand grenades were thrown out of the window, which fortunately did not explode. Investigations will shed light on both cases. Serbia's placed army units near Kosovo on high alert and state media reported that military jets have been flying near the border. Serbian President Aleksandar Vucic has described Kosovo's recent license plate move as a criminal action. The European Union is mediating in negotiations to resolve the dispute. A river of lava far more liquid than ever seen before indicates that the Cumbre Vieja volcano is entering an explosive phase more spectacular and far more distressing for the people of the Spanish island of La Palma. The cone of the volcano split on Saturday in one of the explosions, releasing a torrent of incandescent magma that quickly slid down the slope. Experts say what happened was to be expected and is typical of volcanoes in the Canary Islands, but fear is beginning to take its toll on the population. On Saturday, the airspace was closed due to lack of visibility and thousands of people left the island on ferries, the number and frequency of which had to be increased to meet demand. The airport is operational again, but flights are still suspended as the volcano continues to spew ash into the atmosphere. Since the Cumbre Vieja volcano woke up a week ago, a thick blanket of volcanic lava has covered more than 200 hectares and destroyed more than 450 buildings. Another 1,600 are at risk. More than 6,000 people have been evacuated. If you make this, you'll be the first woman to ever do it. Our man. You have to do this. 
Yes, I do. Who will be? You know I can't. I can't stop. I have to keep going. What you're looking for is in here. Сам есть правой, так проедите, не This Monday on Euronews. Discover flagship projects boosting regions across Europe. Our region has come out of isolation. Learn how they improve lives. We've realized that together we are more intelligent. Hear from the people who have benefited. Small gestures can do a lot in terms of environmental impact. That's in Smart Regions on Euronews and Euronews.com. Schultz and Laschet are neck and neck in the race to succeed Angela Merkel as the next Chancellor of Germany. Strong performances from Germany's Greens and Liberals leave them well placed ahead of coalition talks. The elections to the new Bundestag have left Social Democrat leader Olaf Schultz and his conservative CSU rival Armin Laschet in a neck-and-neck -neck contest to become the next Chancellor of Germany. <laughs> Laschet was Angela Merkel's chosen successor, and as the results started to come in, his first thought was to pay tribute to the woman he hopes to replace. Zum ersten Mal. For the first time in 16 years, Angela Merkel did not run for Chancellor, he said. Those were 16 good years for Germany. And that's why my first thanks go to the Chancellor for her good work. Laschet will need the backing of two parties if he's to get the chancellorship. It'll be a challenge, but he told his supporters he'd do his utmost to succeed. Eine Stimme für die Union ist eine Stimme.